ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನತಿಮಿರಾಂಧ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರೋನ್ಮೇಲಿತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಯೇನ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾ ಮಹ್ಯಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿಕ ನಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನ್ನಿತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ರುಕ್ಮಿಣಿ ಇಸ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಹರ್ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ಸ್ and we are continuing our study of those prayers of rukmini on the first day on the first day we spoke of the importance of hearing krishna's qualities and on the second day we spoke about krishna's rupa madhuri krishna's bodily beauty on the third day and the fourth day we discussed about mukunda mahati kula shila rupa vidya vaya dravina dhama bhir atmatulya rukmini devi is tapping on to krishna's bhakta vatsalyata every devotee wants that the supreme lord should ultimately deliver them from the cycle of birth and death so in the mukundamala stotra king kulashekara has mentioned andhasya merita viveka mahadhanasya chaurai prabho bali virindriya nam adheyai mohanda kupaku hare vinipatitasya devesha yes the mukundamala stotra students kripanasya ಕರಾವಲಂಬಂ ಪದಾವಲಂಬಂ ಕರಾವಲಂಬ ದೇವೇಶ ದೇಹಿ ಕೃಪಣಸ್ಯ ಕರಾವಲಂಬಂ ಮುಕುಂದಮಾಲ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಕುಲಶೇಖರ್ ಅಳ್ವರ್ ರೈಟ್ಸ್ ಮೈ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಅಂಧಸ್ಯ ಐ ಎಂ ಬ್ಲೈಂಡ್ ಅಂಧಸ್ಯ ಐ ಎಂ ಬ್ಲೈಂಡ್ ಟು ದ ರಿಯಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಐ ಎಂ ಬ್ಲೈಂಡ್ ಟು ಯೋರ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಐ ಎಂ ಬ್ಲೈಂಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಗ್ರಾಟಿಟ್ಯೂಡ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಸೀ ಯೋರ್ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ಸಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಮೈ ಲೈಫ್ i am blind as to how i can leave this world and come back to you andhasya me rita viveka mahadhanasya and i have lost the great treasure of discrimination what to do and what not to do while being in this world chaurai prabho bali bhi indriya nama dhiyai and my senses have become stronger than my will power my will power is to get to you but my senses are way more powerful in keeping me in this world and mohan the kupa kuhare vinipati tasya and i have fallen into the dry dark deep long well of illusion temporary material planning look how he puts himself i have fallen into the well of my own material plans i am blind as to how i should get out my senses are stronger than my will power devesha oh lord of the demigods dehi kripanasya karavalambham please put your hand into this well i'll hold your hand and pull me out i cannot come out you pull me out this has been the prayer of every devotee bhagwan adi shankara acharya writes little differently same thing ಸಂಸಾರ ವೃಕ್ಷ ಅಘಬೀಜ ಅನಂತ ಕರ್ಮ ಶಾಖಾಯುತಂ ಕರ್ಣ ಪತ್ರ ಅನಂಗ ಪುಷ್ಪ ಆರೂಯ ದುಃಖ ಫಲಿನ ಪತಿತ ದಯಾಲು ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ನೃಸಿಂಹ ಮಮ ದೇಹಿ ಪದಾವಲಂಬ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಆದಿ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಸೇಸ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕ್ಲೈಂಬ್ ಅ ಟ್ರೀ ಮೈ ಲಾಡ್ ಸಿ ದೇರ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಕುರ್ಲಶೇಖರ ಸೇಸ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಫಾಲನ್ ಡೌನ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ವೆಲ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಆದಿ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಸೇಸ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕ್ಲೈಂಬ್ ಅಪ್ ಅ ಟ್ರೀ what is the name of the tree samsara vriksham 
I have climbed a tree called repeated birth and death. And I have gone far ahead on this tree. Samsara Briksham Aga Bijam Ananta Karma. What is the seed of this tree? What do you think is the seed of this whole tree of birth and death? Sin. Samsara Briksham Agha Bija. The Bija, the seed is Agha, sin. And as a result, many branches have come out. That's karmic reactions. Shakha Yutam Karana Patram Ananga Pushpam. So many intricate, net, complex branches, sub branches, twigs have intertwined themselves in the form of karmic reactions over so many lifetimes. So, my Lord, I have climbed up the tree called repeated birth and death, which has its seed as sin. And so many inconceivably intertwined, interbound reactions in the form of branches and sub branches have caught me. But the flowers are very attractive here. What are the flowers? Ananga Pushpam. The flowers of lusty impulses. In all species of life, the attraction to the opposite gender is there. And that seems to be a very colorful flower which blossoms for some time and when the flower fades, oh, the beauty is gone. Aruya dukkha phalinam patitam dayalum. But my Lord, as I climbed, I saw a fruit. And I thought this was the fruit of joy. And as I bit, dukkha phalinam. After climbing all this, the fruit that I bit into is called distress. And now because I bit that, I lost control and I fell from there back to the ground. Patitam dayalu. And now I have started climbing this tree again. And I have been doing this for lifetimes. Adi Shankaracharya says, Lakshmi Nrasimha Mamadehi Karavalambam. Now you please put your hand here, Lakshmi or Singadev, and you pull me out of this tree game. So every Acharya writes in their own way an appeal, my Lord, you please uplift me. Sripad Prabodhananda Saraswati has written in his own style. What was the first example we said? Kulushekhara, Alwar. He says, I have fallen into the well. Well. Second example, Adi Shankaracharya Bhagavan. I have climbed up a tree. Now Sripad Prabodhananda Saraswati says, I have fallen into the ocean. He says, Samsara dukkha jaladau patitasya kama, krodadi nakra makari kavali kritasya, durvasana nigaditasya nirashrayasya, chaitanya chandra mamadehi karavalambam. Everybody is asking for karavalambam, which means, Oh my Lord, please hold my hand and pull me out. Now look at the description of Prabodhananda Saraswati. Samsara dukkha jaladau. <laughs> I have fallen into an ocean called? Samsara Sagar. Samsara means Bhava Sindhu, the ocean of birth and death. Durilabha manava janama sat sange tarahuei bhava sindhure. Everyone calls this material world an ocean. But Prabodhananda Saraswati even gives details as to what the specifics of this ocean are. He says, Samsara Dukkha Jaladav, I have fallen into the ocean of suffering where every drop only gives me misery. It's salty. We are all aware of the fact, water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink, right? Because we can drink ocean water and quench our thirst. Our kidneys can't process <laughs> ocean water, right? It just makes us, most, makes us more dehydrated than before. So therefore there is a saying, water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. So Prabodhananda Saraswati says, I have fallen into the salty ocean of distress in this world, where I am trying to quench the thirst of joy by drinking this water. But the more I drink, the more distressful my life becomes. And now as I am sinking in this water, underwater there is a feast. Krodadi nakra makari kavali kritasya. From one side there is a shark, from another side there is a crocodile, from another side there is a whale. In the form of lust, anger and greed, they are coming to devour me <laughs> in this ocean of suffering. And now if I try to swim, durvasana nigaditasya nirashrayasya, I cannot because my hands are tied, handcuffed 
by my own bad habits. Can you imagine? The person is drowning in the water, wants to save himself, his hands are handcuffed. And at the same time, as he's sinking and drowning, he can see the crocodiles almost licking their mouth for a feast. So the anger, lust and greed in our heart are the sea monsters ready to devour us. And repeated birth and death, the distress water of repeated birth and death is the samsara sindhu. And our hands are tied because we can't even perform dharmic activities and swim across because we don't want to perform there. Right? We are handcuffed by our, our own bad habits. And as he's sinking down, Prabodhananda Saraswati says, I can only see one ray of hope. There's a rescue operator, life, lifeguard, on the shore of the ocean of Kali Yuga, and that is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Chaitanya Chandra Mama Dehi Karavalambam, as I'm sinking and drowning, my Lord, I raise my hands. Oh, lifeguard, please save me. And he's saying, Haribol, Haribol, please save me. And Mahaprabhu jumps jumps into this ocean of material existence and Mahaprabhu is swimming with devotees out. Ke jabi ke jabi re bhai Aai Bhava sindhu paar Dhanya kali juge rachai Tanya avatar Dhanya avatar Lochandas Thakur says Ke jabi ke jabi re bhai Who amongst us want to cross over the ocean of suffering? Bhava sindhu par How do we do that? Dhanya kali juge ra chai Tanya avatar Dhanya Kali Jogera Chaitanya Avatar because the rescue operator, the lifeguard called Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has jumped into this ocean and with both his hands he's swimming and pulling devotees out of this birth and death. But how does he do it? It is described he has a boat and he's the boatman and on both sides there are the oars to kind of uh, row your boat. And what are they? The two arms of Kirtan. Lochandas Thakur says, those who chant the holy name, the holy name is the boat. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the boatman. And those who raise their hands up and dance in that kirtan, they're actually rowing. <laughs> so next time there's a kirtan, we are singing in front of Mahaprabhu and we are dancing. Please understand, the holy name is the boat. Mahaprabhu is the boatman. And when you dance and you raise your hands up, oh, that's actually the oar to row your boat. So every Acharya writes in their own sweet way a way to uplift them from the cycle of birth and death. One Brajbhasha poet writes that my Lord, now look at his expression of seeking help. He's saying, my Lord, I have been a dancer. What kind of dancer? Now this is very beautiful, super beautiful. He says, on the dancing stage of this world, I have been dancing with 8.4 million different costumes. Now look at this, this is so beautiful. Just like we sometimes take on the body of a fish and sometimes the body of a tree and sometimes we become birds and sometimes we become insects and demigods and human beings. The Brajbhasha poet writes, on the stage of this material world, my Lord, I have been dancing with 8.4 million different types of costumes, sometimes dressing myself up as a fish and sometimes dressing myself as a tree, and I've been dancing. I've been dancing to the tunes of my material desires. But who has been my constant audience? My Lord, you. Every life, my dancing audience has changed. They have come in and left. My family, my friends, relatives. But my Lord, there's one constant Spectator, and that's you as Paramatma, who has been seeing me dance 8.4 million different costumes. So now, my Lord, now it's the time for the, the result. Have I been a good dancer? If yes, please don't give me any more dancing roles. 
which means liberate me from the cycle of birth and death. And if I've been a pathetic dancer, then I think I've tried enough. <laughs> Let me go. Our acharyas are so amazing. Another poet writes in Sanskrit, My Lord, I have heard you're a thief. Then I have a request. Why don't you steal away my opportunity to drink my mother's milk in my next birth? Which means if I'm born in my next birth, I will drink my mother's milk anyway, right? Whichever species that is. So if I have heard you're a great thief, then why don't you steal my opportunity to drink my mother's milk in my next life? Which means don't give me a birth again. So if I don't take birth, I will not drink my mother's milk again, right? So in this way, acharyas have interesting ways of presenting their uh, prayer. Goswami Surdas Ji, who is Netrahin Surdas from Vrindavan, a disciple of Sripad Ballabhacharya, in Bridge he writes, the same theme that we just discussed, but he gives it with more details. Nacho bohat gopal ab main nacho bohat gopal nacho bohat gopal ab main nacho bohat gopal oh gopal i have been dancing enough in this world ab main har gaya i don't want to dance anymore and he gives details with the ankle bells of illusion with the waist bells of my greed uh, my Lord, I have been keeping the beat cycle of my material desires on the stage, the platform of this world. My Lord, I have danced enough. Now please liberate me from this stage. Surdas ke sabe avidya Dur karo nand lal ab mein Na jo bahut gopal Surdas ke sabhi avidya dur karo nandalal nacho bohat gopal abhume nacho bohat gopal. My Lord, you please free me from all my illusion, from all my material desires. I don't want to dance this anymore. <laughs> so in this way, every acharya writes their own presentation of liberation, begging the Supreme Lord uh, to find upliftment. Rupa Goswami Pad writes an interesting presentation. He doesn't ask for liberation, but he asks for continued love and reciprocation from the Lord. Rupa Goswami Pad writes, Virachaya mai dandam dina bandor dayamba gati rihana bhavatta kachi danyam mamasti Nipatatu shatakoti nirmalambha navambhas tadapi kila payoda stuyate chatakena. One of the finest prayers ever in, recorded in the history of mankind. If there is one verse worthy of praying, this is it. Rupa Goswami, it's quite interesting. I, um, I just want to mention this. In one of our travels, we happened to go to Chicago um, and there we met a devotee who was playing Murdanga and on his forearm I saw a tattoo that he had which said Stuyate Chatakena and I was amazed because that's the last line of that prayer. Gati rihana bhavatta kachi danya mamasti nipatutu shatakoti nirvalambha navambas tadapi kila payoda stuyate chatakena. So the last line of that prayer was like an imprint tattooed on his arm. And I asked him, I have never seen anybody praying this prayer. How did you even get a tattoo out of the last line? He said that when I read that verse, it touched my heart and I felt I want to remember this for all times to come. Now we will do the translation for, for the verse. Everyone, all the acharyas are praying, my Lord, please lift me up, right? Rupa Goswami Pad is presenting the same thing but in a very sweet way. He says, Virachaya mai dandam dina bandho dayamba. Oh Krishna, it's a well-known fact that you are a 
bluish black freshly formed rain filled monsoon cloud if you are a rain filled monsoon cloud i want to tell you who i am i am the chataka pakshi chataka pakshi is that poetic bird who has this eternal connection with the rain cloud the chataka pakshi will feel thirsty but will not drink any source of water in this world it is described the chataka pakshi only wants the water coming from the freshly formed monsoon rain clouds and that to only during a specific star constellation called as the swati nakshatra so they say if you throw a chataka pakshi even in the ganga and it's thirsty the chataka pakshi will die with its beak up it's ready to drown itself in the ganga but will never sip the water of even ganga it doesn't want any source of water in this world except the rain cloud that's the love that chataka pakshi has for the rain the cloud so rupa goswami pad writes krishna if you are my rain cloud then i want you to know i am your chataka pakshi i will not drink any source of joy in the form of water in this world even if you give me the highest position of being thrown into the ganga waters of joy i will die with my beak up but my lord i want to loudly proclaim as much as you proclaim that i belong to you i loudly proclaim you belong to me and my lord i will continue to cry in front of you re re chatak savadhan manasa mitra kshanam shruyatam अंबोदा बहवो हि सन्ति गगने सर्वे नैतादृशा केचिदृष्टिभिराधय वसुदा कालिदास जी राइट्स इन हिस् पोएट्री गर्जी केचिदृथा यम यम पश्यसी तस्य तस्य पुरतो माब्रु हि दीनम वच कालिदास जी राइट्स द मेन्टालिटी ऑफ द चातक the chataka cries before the rain cloud and the rain cloud has three responses you see this constant cloud we would say flowing in the sky <laughs> because it's called meghamala it's like almost a network of constant cloud connection right so the chataka pakshi when it cries out to the rain cloud it's expressing its heartfelt desire that i want to drink your water but the rain cloud has three responses either it can hear and just pass or second can offer rain or third after hearing the cry of the chataka it can throw in thunderbolts on the head of the chataka the rain cloud has three responses rupa goswami pad says my lord virachaya mai dandam deena bandho dayamba you can offer any of these three responses on me no harm but gatir ihana bhavatta kachid anya mamasti but i loudly proclaim the sky being my sakshi my witness i loudly proclaim lifetime after lifetime my lord you are my rain cloud and i am your chataka pakshi either you can hear me cry and keep quiet like how the rain cloud does and just pass or you can hear me cry and throw thunderbolts of punishment of karmic reactions or you can hear me cry and give torrential rain in the form of your mercy my lord you have these options i have only one option to turn my neck towards you that's all therefore ni patatu shatakoti either you punish me with millions and millions of thunderbolts on my head or nirmalambha navambhas or you drench me with the rain water of your mercy tadapi kila payodaha oh dear cloud i want you to know stuyate chatakena this chataka continues to cry for you lifetime after lifetime so this devotee i saw in chicago had the tattoo which said stuyate chatakena and i was so touched i said this is amazing in this world to even know the chataka pakshi is a rare phenomenon what to speak of aspiring to love krishna who is the rain cloud as much as the chataka loves the rain and then to know this words of rupa goswami and have it printed so he said all my life i want to see this and remember this is the mood i want 
So every Vaishnav in his own way has presented. So we gave a few examples. Kula Shekhara, Mukunda Malastotra, Adi Shankaracharya, Prabodhananda Saraswati, Braj Poetry, Surdas Ji, Rupa Goswami. Which one did you like the most? All of them. <laughs> True, they all come with different metaphors and different examples. Rukmini Devi now, following the same example. Very beautifully, after glorifying Krishna's qualities, she's tapping into Krishna's Bhaktavatsalyata. And she says, Yasyangri Pankaja Rajas Napanam Mahanto Vanchan Tumapati Rivatma Tamopa Hatyai Yaryam Bujakshana Labhe Yabhavat Prasadam. She says, I am ready to die Shata Janma Bhisyat. Krishna, I want you to know, Rukmini is speaking. Your qualities are beautiful. You are Bhuvana Sundara. You are Achyuta. Bhuvana Sundara means you attract the whole creation. So you attracting me is not my fault, it's your fault. You are Achyuta. Achyuta. Na Chutaha Swasthanam. Sthanat. He who never falls from his position. But in this context, the word Achyuta means he who never fails from his promise of rescuing his devotee. And she also says, Haratonga Tapam. The word Angatapa means the material distress of this world, Angatap. But Srila Jiva Goswami Pad, in his commentary he has written, the word Anga can also mean a call for Krishna. Hey Anga, Harato Tapam. Hearing about you removes the distress, ho Anga. The word Anga can either mean the body or Anga can mean an address to Krishna. Oh, he who is so dear to me like my own life, my own body. Hmm. After calling out all these qualities of Krishna, she is now finally praying. Oh dear Krishna, you please rescue me. I may not be qualified. <laughs> you are so advanced, you are so exalted, you are so beautiful and unparalleled and unprecedented in your position. And I may be very fallen. But I know of your Bhaktavat Salyata. I know how much you love your devotees. Like you can see in Udupi, the Supreme Lord turned for one devotee. What was his name? Kanakadasar. That's correct. For one devotee, the Supreme Lord turned. The deity of Udupi Krishna was standing straight and the temple rules were such that only those born in Brahminical families were allowed inside the temple. And Kanaka Das was such a great devotee, he stood outside the temple because he wasn't allowed inside, because he was not born in a quote-unquote Brahminical family. And he continued to perform Kirtan for so many days, calling out to Krishna. They wouldn't let him even stand outside, so he would stand to the side. Outside the temple, from the side window, he was looking at Udupi Krishna and he was doing his Kirtan. And at one point, Krishna couldn't hold himself. And Udupi Krishna, who's standing, holding a butter stick, to the water pot, he turned towards the side window. And now if you see, this is the main window and this is blocked. So everyone who wants to take darshan has to take darshan from the window that Kanakadas Sok, the Supreme Lord. The word Bhakta Vatsalya is a very beautiful word. The word Vatsalya comes from the word Vatsa and Vatsa means a calf. The love that the mother cow has for her calf is just a hint to how much love Krishna has for his devotees. I remember in my childhood, there, there is one devotee called Mukundamadava Prabhu in Mumbai. So I happened to ask Prabhuji one question. You know in Bhagavatam there is a verse where it says, uh, Janeshu Abhidneshu Sa Eva Gokhara. It calls of certain uh, mentality and says anybody who has this mentality has the mentality of a cow or a donkey. So I asked him a question that yes, all these different mentalities mentioned into that verse, they may be compared to a donkey mentality, foolish mentality, but why a cow? 
The cow is considered to be a very sacred animal. So he told me something very sweet. It stuck with me in my heart. He told me this in my childhood. He said the mother cow loves her calf so much. This is very heart touching what he told me. It went so much into my heart that I'm remembering that now when I'm speaking this. He said the mother cow loves her calf so much that if accidentally a calf dies, right? And the person who takes care of the cow, the, the, the cowherd boy or the man taking care of the cow shed, if he doesn't want the cow to know that the calf is missing, then even if he covers a bunch of objects with a white cloth, as white as the complexion of the calf, the mother cow loves the calf so blindly, she would even go and lick that, thinking that that's her calf. He told me, when the mother cow realizes, then she weeps so piteously that this is not her child. Anything in the shape, which is white in color and in the shape of that, the structure of that calf, the mother will go close and start licking, remembering her child. This is how much blindly Krishna loves his devotees. Therefore, when we say bhakta vatsalyata, it is a very great, great quality of the Lord. He can go to any extent for his devotee. Today is Makar Sankranti. The day Bhishma Dev departed from this world. And how much love Krishna had for Bhishma Dev. When Bhishma Dev was departing, can you imagine the level of Bhishma Stuti prayers that we happily sing on our Kartal and Mridanga. Bhishma Dev sang that while sleeping on a bed of arrows. How much love he has for Krishna. And how much love Krishna has for Bhishma Dev. Just look at this. When the Pandavas were deciding that they want to go to Bhishma Dev, Krishna said, I want all of you to deck yourself up as the kings of this universe. With the crown, with the gold earrings. No longer as forest dwellers in exile. I want all of you to dress up with armor and helmets and the proper necklace and the proper earrings. And they said, why? Krishna said, before Bhishma leaves this world, let us give him the best sight that he was looking for. Bhishma lived all his life to see the Pandavas being coronated as the kings. As Bhishma is departing on the day of Makar Sankranti, Krishna told the Pandavas, all five of you, dress as if you were the kings of this world and stand in front of Bhishma Dev, making him feel proud that the sacrifice that he laid down his life for has borne fruit. That the Pandavas have become kings. And how sensitive is Krishna to the departing heart of Bhishma that I want to give joy to Bhishma Dev before he departs. And how much love for Arjun In the battle, in the middle, of, please read the Mahabharata, the, especially the section of the battle. It's astounding how much Krishna held Arjun. In the middle of the battle, Arjuna's horses start feeling thirsty now. Can you imagine the horses which have been fighting the battle for Arjun? They are thirsty and you can't break the battle in the middle. Arjuna looks at Krishna and says, my horses can't fight, they are all thirsty. Krishna says, I will distract the whole assembly. Let your horses drink water. Krishna lets Arjuna's horses take a break in the middle of the battle of Kurukshetra. So that not Arjun, not Krishna, but Arjuna's horses. And they are drinking water and the Kaurava army are just fighting completely oblivious. They don't know where Arjuna is. They can't see Arjuna. Krishna's just blocked everybody's sight in such a way that they don't even remember him. They're just fighting. And to the side of the battle, Arjuna is just peacefully standing and his horses are drinking water. Krishna's put a whole cloud of illusion. And as soon as the horses drink water and they're ready, that's removed and everyone starts looking at Arjuna. How much love? Only if we can know how much Krishna loves us, Krishna consciousness will become very simple. At the moment, it's duty bound. It's something that I have to do. Only if we can feel how much Krishna loves me, how much he has done for me, how much he is doing for me, how much he will do for me, 
We won't think twice before sacrificing anything, let alone onion and garlic, for his pleasure. Arjuna is not watching, and Karna shoots arrows. He's shooting the Nagastra. Arjuna is not watching, and the Nagastra is aimed to take the kantha, the throat of Arjuna's body. Karna has shot the Nagastra, the, the snake weapon, and at blitzing speed, it leaves the bow of Karna, almost close to knocking off the head of Arjun. And Krishna pushes the whole chariot a few inches down. And poof, the helmet's gone. And Arjuna looks confused and he looks at Krishna and he says, that crown had Navaratna in it. And that got knocked off. Krishna said, forget about the Navaratna. Your head would have been knocked off. Can you imagine? He pushes the whole chariot a few inches underground. Arjuna promises, before the sun sets, I will kill Jayadrat. And Duryodhan said, ah, oh, that's not going to happen. Okay, what if you don't kill Jayadrat? Arjuna said, I will make a pyre and I will enter that fire. Duryodhan said, wow. <laughs> that's like playing soccer with someone who's going to hit self-goal. You don't even have to score a goal, just give it to him. He's going to hit it into his goal post. We just have to fight Arjun. Well, we don't have to because he's going to kill himself. And how he's going to kill himself? If he can't find Jayadrat, let's just hide Jayadrat. So they create this whole oceanic army. And then they keep Jayadrat at the end. And Arjun fights the whole army from sunrise to sunset. And at sunset, the army is destroyed and Jayadrat is face to face. The sun has set. Now, now what to do? Arjuna couldn't kill Jayadrat, which means he has to kill himself. Duryodhan reminds Arjun, okay, so what about the plan? It's sundown already and Jayadrat is alive. Arjuna said, I'm a Kshatriya, I'll keep my word. With that same arrow that Arjuna was trying to shoot Jayadrat, Arjuna created fire. And he was just a moment close to entering that fire. Krishna held him. He said, what are you doing? He said, no, I didn't keep my word. Now I'm entering fire. Krishna said, with that same arrow, kill Jayadrat. No, we cannot kill Jayadrat because it's already sundown. Krishna said, kill Jayadrat. <laughs> now there's a back end story to it. Jayadrat had a blessing from Lord Shiva that he would never die in battle unless his father drops his head from his hand. Now how is that going to ever happen? The father will never drop his son's head off his palms, never. Krishna told Arjun, shoot Jayadrat on the head. His father is performing Sandhya Vandan there, behind so if you shoot the arrow, it hits the head of Jayadrat, falls into the palms of his father, then we see what happens. Krishna said, I can't kill Jayadrat like this, it's already sundown. Krishna said, no, it's not sundown. I with my Sudarshan Chakra have blocked the sun. Krishna revealed, he removed the Sudarshan Chakra and sun is still shining. Everyone thought it was sunset. Krishna said, the sun is still up there. To confuse everyone, I blocked it with the Sudarshan Chakra. So that, Jay, they, so that they will bring Jayadrat out. Because they had hit Jayadrat. So that they bring Jayadrat out, I block the sun with my Sudarshan Chakra. Now that Jayadrat is here, I remove the sun. The, the covering of the sun through the Sudarshan Chakra. Now there is sun, the battle is still on, it's not sunset, shoot Jayadrat. Krishna, on his order, Arjuna shoots the arrow. The head of Jayadrat goes flying into the hands of the father who is offering his oblations in the evening and something suddenly falls into the hand and he drops it. Jayadrat is dead. Hare Krishna. How much love? 
when the same bhishma dev charged towards arjun krishna charged with a half broken chariot wheel krishna promised i will fight the battle but i'll never pick a weapon but now he saw arjuna being charged and bhishma was way more powerful nothing should happen to my arjun i am okay to break my own promise to protect arjun kshipram bhavati dharmatma shashva shantim nigachati kaunte ya pratijani hi name bhakta pranashyati hey arjun loudly proclaim my devotee never perishes and to protect that arjun krishna protected him with a half broken chariot wheel going fighting towards bhishma and this is the scene bhishma captures in his heart and on the day of makar sankranti as bhishma dev is departing he is remembering oh my heart is still yearning to see the form of krishna smeared ashen prabhupad writes ashen ashen means filled up with dust his hair and his body ashen with the dust of the battlefield as krishna is carrying a half broken chariot wheel to protect arjun bhishma is saying may this form eternally reside in my heart rukmini devi writing so much she says my lord now you please rescue me in the middle four verses she talks about the strategy of rescue it's quite interesting from uh, text 39 to 42 she talks about krishna one apart from you i have no other choice i have willingly lovingly happily chosen you over shishupal and it's quite interesting when she wrote that letter she she sent it through a brahmana the brahmana comes with the letter and it's described by shridhar swami in his bhavartha dipika commentary the letter had a ribbon and the brahmana removed the ribbon and showed krishna the letter why because that letter according to shridhar swami that rukmini wrote was printed with the imprints of her dried up tears shridhar swami writes the original commentator rukmini as she was writing the letter along with her words the paper had become um, the sponge to soak in the imprints of her tears and the brahmana showed these tears to krishna krishna said oh brahmana i want you to read the letter why because that brahmana represents guru tatva rukmini is the jiva and krishna is bhagavan when the living entity wants to go to god the first step is may the living entity hear about god from the brahmana who is the guru by hearing from guru the desire to express our prayers comes into existence but the living entity has no power to send her letter to the abode of the lord so must send it to the same guru and that guru takes it to krishna but krishna now says i want you to read her feelings for me rukmini trusted you krishna tells the brahmana i trust you now you read the letter the brahmana reads the letter and there rukmini says my dear lord please come and rescue me i know you will have a problem thinking how am i going to do this should i fight and kill your family members rukmini doesn't want that either so she says please don't do that but on the day of my marriage i'm going to step out of, out of my house to worship goddess girija who is mother parvati and their family won't be there i'm going to be alone so why don't you come in disguise and bring in some maharathis maharathis means for example a normal soldier let's say you give 10 units of strength the maharathi would be given maybe 10000 units of strength So Rukmini tells Krishna please don't come with an army that'll create a havoc come just with five or six maharathis and all in disguise in different parts and you also come and hide and as i get into the palace of mother girija or durga devi there you very quickly kidnap me onto your chariot Rukmini Devi teaches us whoever we may be 
we are going to ruffle the feathers of our family if we start loving Krishna. Rukmini Devi is teaching us, my Lord, please don't kill any of my family members, but quickly frisk me out when there's nobody around. Which means some level of spiritual diplomacy is needed. Rukmini Devi is teaching the Lord how to diplomatically get this kidnapping act done. Huh? Oh Krishna, till now you have been a thief of butter. But now you have to steal me. You have been practicing all your life for this main game. <laughs> so now I will give you some strategy, she says. And she, you know, very diplomatically tells Krishna what to do. And those are also part of the prayers. So Rukmini Devi also here, she is using her transcendental diplomatic skills to tell Krishna how to do this. And it's such a wonderful lesson. There are three levels of armies that Krishna has to fight before rescuing any living entity. Now look at this. Rukmini has her inner chamber. She has the external family, like the inner chamber as in her sakis who dress her up, etc. for the wedding. Then her family and then the army of, you know, Bhishmaka. Krishna has to fight three layers before taking Rukmini out. Even for all of us, he fights three layers. He fights the external calamities in the sense if there are problems that we are having with others, Krishna helps us there. Then he barges in and if there are family problems, let's say Dhruva with the mother, Prahlad with the father, Vibhishan with the brother, he fights that too. And then he goes straight into our heart and the problems that we have with lust, anger and greed, he fights that too. And finally picks the soul in the form of Rukmini on the chariot of his mercy and takes us back home, back to God. It. How beautiful. Rukmini Devi, as she's chanted these prayers, in the first two, hearing about Krishna's qualities and glorifying his beauty, and in the next four, talking about how the, the hijack should take place. And then finally she prays, my Lord, I am simply remembering your lotus feet. If I don't get you this life, which I totally understand, tomorrow is my wedding and today I'm writing a letter to you, even universities don't accept <laughs> applications this late. I understand, my Lord, if this doesn't reach you, or you read but you have other things to do, or you decide not to come to me, that's fine. But I won't marry Shishupal. I am ready to die, take another birth, perform same tapasya to get you, and again die, and take another birth, and in this way, the last phrase is, Shata Janmabhi Syat. Let hundreds of such lives pass, my Lord, but I have decided, apart from you, I won't accept anybody else in my life. Dear devotees, to conclude our discussion, we all have to have this choice. Moment to moment, should I pick the Shishupal called Maya? Or moment to moment, should I pick the Dwarkadish called Krishna? And we should be like Rukmini. We have the Mangal Sutra in the form of our Kantimala. And we have the Sindur in the form of our Tilak. We want to tell the Shishupal allurements of this world. I am already married to Krishna in the form of the Krishna Consciousness Movement. However attractive the Shishupal allurements are of this world, try on someone else, I am a chaste wife. And in this mood, we surrender our lives following the prayerful uh, mission and the prayerful mood of Rukmini Devi. Having said this, I would like to pause our discussion until next time. Thank you all for coming in, tolerating me for the last five days. Whatever mistakes may have been committed through, through my words, you kindly forgive me.